Hi, I'm Brian with Mead Instruments, and we're going to show you how to align your Mead computerized go-to telescope. It's called a go-to telescope because it will literally go to the object that you've keyed into your AutoStar 2 or AudioStar handbox. How to align your telescope might be the most common question we get about the telescope setup. Uh, one reason why it can cause confusion is aligning the telescope can mean more than one thing. Uh, this evening we're going to concentrate on aligning the computerized go-to system on your Mead Altazimuth telescope. That includes a lot of telescopes, the ETX series, the LX200, the LX600. So I hope you'll find this very useful and it does answer a lot of the common questions that we get on aligning your telescope. So let's get started. Once aligned, your telescope will go to any number of objects that you can key into your computerized hand controller. But in order for the telescope to know where it's positioned, you just have to align it on at least one named star so it can synchronize its position with the night sky. And from there, you're free to start observing, entering objects, uh, any number of thousands of objects that are in the hand control database. Before we can align the computerized go-to system on the telescope, we should make sure that the viewfinder or the red dot finder is aligned to the telescope. And this is another term where aligning your telescope can mean more than one thing. But this is a, a one-time, very essential thing that you have to do to at least be able to find a couple of bright named stars in the sky. Uh, especially if you're using a high-power telescope like an ACF, you really cannot easily locate something just by sighting down the tube. So you'll want to have your viewfinder or your red dot aligned. Uh, so I'll just do that real quick. Uh, it can be done during the day. I know it's outlined in the manual, but uh, we can just kind of demonstrate that. Uh, for example, during the day, I'll want to sight a target that's a good few hundred yards away or more, or even a distant mountaintop or something uh, is useful. But most of the time I try to find something like a telephone pole or something a few hundred yards away. And in the beginning, we're going to want to sight the object through the eyepiece of the telescope. So in the very beginning, you do have to find something through the telescope, but something that's easy to pick out. Like, So when I get my target, you'll want to center it in the eyepiece of your telescope. Uh, typically just use uh, the lower power of the two eyepieces it came with. I have it centered in my eyepiece, and now we'll make adjustments to the viewfinder so that the same object is centered in the crosshairs of the viewfinder. If you're using a red dot finder, you can also during, do that during the day. You'll just make the XY adjustments on the red dot finder until the red dot is lined up to the same target. And when you have it aligned, just make sure that all your adjustment screws are snug so it doesn't move later. Now, ideally, uh, you don't have to realign your viewfinder unless sometimes if you transport the telescope or if you remove the viewfinder from its bracket, uh, you may have to realign it. But for the most part, this is now good to go. And so now when it's dark and you need to cite a couple of named stars to align your go-to, this process is going to be much easier. To get started with all AudioStar equipped computerized Althazmuth telescopes, we want to begin by loosening the azimuth lock, and then we're going to position the telescope so that it's pointing north. And a couple ways you can find true north uh, simply using the compass on your phone is a pretty good start. Most uh, compasses on smartphones account for the magnetic offset, so that'll get you close as long as the phone is not near something that might throw off the reading. You can also use a classic compass. Uh, several Mead telescopes do include a, a classic compass with a bubble level. Just keep in mind that if you do use this type of compass, uh, you may want to account for the magnetic offset. It will vary depending on your location. You want to be fairly accurate, but you don't have to really be super precise. And I think uh, a lot of effort sometimes can be put into that, you know, making sure that you're absolutely perfect. For this stage of the setup, you don't have to be perfect, but accuracy in general is good. So I'm pointing it at true north, uh, and I kind of memorized it. I know where true north is now, even during the day on this, this setup location. Now lock the azimuth. Next thing we'll do is unlock the altitude and the optical tube we want to position it so that it is horizontal and level like I'm showing right here. I'm eyeballing it so what I'm going to do to get more accurate is use in this case the included bubble level with this ETX so I can get pretty close right there and now lock the altitude and again you know accuracy is good but you don't have to be perfect. So this is now pointing north 
and the optical tube is level, north and level. This is referred to as the home position. And this is where I find some people start to get hung up. This is the initial position that you have to set the telescope to in order for the computer to know where to start. It assumes you're starting here in the home position. With the telescope in the home position, switch the telescope on and wait a few moments for the computer to initialize. You'll hear a beep and then the message, press zero to align or mode for menu. Press zero to start the alignment. The default alignment will be two star alignment where audio star will select the alignment stars for you based on the date, time, and location entered. If your telescope is equipped with GPS, the telescope will acquire a GPS fix and automatically provide the date, time, and location data. If linking for the first time, it may take a moment. Telescopes without GPS will need to enter this information manually. You'll then be prompted to enter the date, time, and daylight savings. Now select which home position you have. Remember, we've pointed the telescope to true north, so I'm going to select north method 1 for true. If you instead pointed the telescope using your classic compass, which does not account for the magnetic offset, select 2 for compass. You'll start to see instructions scrolling across the audio star screen. Press the scroll up or down keys to change the scrolling speed. If you have an AutoStar 2 equipped computerized altazimuth telescope like the LX200 or LX600, the initial home position is automatically found just with the automatic align feature. It may take several minutes at first uh, to first acquire the home position and when it does it will find north and level automatically for you. Okay, here we go. Press enter and the telescope is going to try to find the first alignment star. Now once the telescope has finished slewing to the first alignment star, have a look through your viewfinder. And don't worry if the star is not centered or maybe even just outside of the field of view of your viewfinder. Uh, but it will be pointing to the brightest star in the region of sky that it's pointing at. So even if you're not entirely sure which star it's trying to point at, in this case it's the star Vega, which is very bright, um, so I know that's what I'm going for, but if you didn't know that, you would know that it's pointing at the brightest star in that area. So we'll want to start by sighting it through our viewfinder, and this is where Aligning the viewfinder during the day as we've done just makes this process a whole lot easier And while you're doing so you can always adjust the the centering speed by um, the audio star or the auto star to press the speed uh, button one followed by the rate that you want I'm going to go ahead and choose five Now once you have your star centered in the viewfinder Look through your eyepiece. It's recommended that you start with the lower power eyepiece in your collection. Uh, the telescope came with, in this case, a 26 millimeter super plossal, so I'm using that to give myself a bigger field of view and a better chance of finding the target in the field of view. Once that star is centered, we'll press enter and we'll go on to our second alignment star. And again, it doesn't necessarily center that star, and that's the whole reason why we're doing this alignment. Once the computer is synchronized in a couple of named stars, that's when it will find the rest of any object for you. We'll do the same thing to the second alignment star, and once we have it centered in our eyepiece, we'll press enter. And my auto star 2 has told me align successful. Now, if you don't get a successful alignment, it might mean a number of things. Uh, perhaps the date, time, or location was entered incorrectly. You might want to double check the two stars that you've aligned on. Uh, it's important that you do center those stars in the eyepiece.
And once you do so, it will synchronize itself to the database uh, against the night sky. So from here, we're ready to start observing. Now that we're aligned, let's select an easy object to observe. Uh, tonight, right now, Saturn is still out in the southwestern sky. So I'm going to go ahead and select Saturn. In the AutoStar 2 or the AudioStar hand controller, you'll go to the Object menu, press Enter. In this case, uh, the first thing that comes up is Solar System, which is what we want. I will press Enter. And now to select the planet you want to see, just hit the up or down arrows, the scrolling arrows at the bottom of the hand controller. I'm going to scroll down to Saturn and press Enter. You'll get some information about the target. Then go ahead and press Go To, and the telescope will go to that target. Now you should expect to see the object in the eyepiece's field of view. And again, it's recommended that you use a lower power eyepiece to do this, and it will better the odds of it landing somewhere in the field of view. You may find that it's not perfectly centered, and that's okay. Uh, the computer has successfully done its job if it's found the target for you. Uh, planet is an easy enough object to, to find because it's a naked eye target, but it really comes in handy when you start to observe very faint deep sky objects like galaxies or planetary nebulae. In some cases, uh, you don't want to be guessing as to where it's pointing because at a glance it's very hard to find unless you observe it through a telescope. So the go-to technology here becomes extremely useful. With the telescope aligned it's a great opportunity to access the guided tour included in all the AudioStar and AutoStar 2 hand controllers. In the main menu scroll down until you see guided tour, press enter, now select tonight's best and press enter. And here you can scroll through the most noteworthy things to see on a given night, um, given the date, time, and location information that's already in the computer. So I can scroll down, and this is great. Uh, you know, if you don't know where to start, you can go through some of the, the more prominent objects uh, without even consulting a star chart or anything. You can just kind of take your tour right here and start uh, touring some of the most prominent objects in the night sky. Here's an interesting one, Messier 45, the Pleiades, this is a giant open cluster, also uh, a rather dark uh, reflection nebula. So we can go to that target from the tour, I'm going to press enter, and go to, 